Today, we'll make a winter sign from a Dollar Tree calendar. Keep watching. So we're gonna use the June 2021 picture. And you can see here, there are lots and lots of really nice options in this calendar. And I think this is a Simply Blessed calendar. I don't know where the front of it is, but I couldn't find it. So very carefully, you want to tear this out. You can crease it a few times, folding it back and forth and then pulling, or you can use a rotary cutter or your scissors whatever you wanna to do to get a nice clean line. Then we're gonna use some of this foam board that comes from Dollar Tree. These are some stacking blocks that come from the children's toy section. And then I have a variety of ribbons from the Dollar Tree and from Big Lots. I was going for a winter look and a farmhouse look, keeping it kind of basic to match the picture, which I think is simple and pretty. Those little pliers or the little tweezers there, I also got from Dollar Tree in the automotive section in a multi-pack. Okay. So now we have our supplies together, and this is just an extra piece of this foam board. I've actually used this on several projects, so you can really stretch your dollar this way. Foam board is not as simple to cut with scissors uh, because there's some thickness to it, and you can get ridges and snags in it. So using some type of a blade would probably be better, box cutter or something like that. I got my cutter from Dollar Tree, I think but I've had it for a while, so I can't be completely sure, but I'm sure they have something that's equivalent to this that you can get. I'm gonna take my metal ruler as an edge to make a nice clean line there. And I used a light color marker when I traced it out so that if anything was left, it wouldn't be that noticeable, like a heavy, thick black line wouldn't, you know, that would really stand out. So I just went ahead and did it with a light color because to be honest with you, I couldn't find my pencil. So you're going to turn over the poster board and then cut through the back layer. And then you can see there I have a little struggle. My blade's getting dull, but you can clean that up. So here's going to be our backing for our beautiful little picture. And I, I'm going to tell you, you can definitely still see the lines through here. So if that bugs you, I don't know what a solution for that would be. It's not incredibly noticeable once the glue dries, but it's still kind of there. You can see the shadow. So use whatever kind of glue stick you have on hand. I have a variety always in my reach. And we're gonna try to center this down as good as we can. You know me and this wooden ruler, I'm always using this to make a nice flat board. And I do have a little crease that still managed to be stuck in there. So I'm just, with this glue stick, you can gently kind of peel up and then press those out. And even when that's all said and done, for some reason, this particular one was giving me a little, <clears throat> little trouble. So there are some ridges in here that don't come out, but I'm fine with that. You know, it's farmhouse and farmhouse is not perfect. Don't have to worry about those little jagged edges that I have down there because we're gonna make a frame. So using these stacking blocks, go ahead and do a, a dry run and see where you want these to go because they don't fit exactly you're gonna have some overhang on both ends. So just kind of get your idea of where they're gonna go. And then go ahead and add your glue and put these down. I'm just using hot glue because it's, it's easy and it works fast and it's perfect for this type of project, I think. I think what I'm using right now is the Gorilla Glue Sticks but I do have Dollar Tree glue sticks in there as well. Just depends on what I had the last project. So you see that there was some overhang and that's okay. And then try to get these as straight as you can. Doesn't have to be perfect. And you can certainly use something square here to line them up if you would like. I do have that one that I'm playing with. It's kind of out of line, but I'm gonna peel that up very, very gently 
and then put it back down there in the right place. Simple enough, right? We can fix those little boo-boos. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to an embellishment for the top, and I'm just gonna take one of these little bows. It's like a scrap bow. I don't know exactly the name of it, but I'm gonna take three six inch pieces, no, these are five inch pieces, of each one of these ribbons that I chose. And I am going to just go ahead and, and cut them. I hope I can find some more of this ribbon. I bought two spools of it, but I'm kind of, I've kind of worked my way through it. And uh, it's beautiful. It's perfect for farmhouse. It's really neutral. And it reminds me of like a mattress ticking, the gray and the white. It's gonna look good, I think, all year long in any project. And the snowflakes, snowflake ribbon here, I think looks really nice with it. It's got that burlap um, look or coloring. So you don't have to have any particular pattern for this bow. You just start crossing it over in like a, a squished X. Just put it in here any way you want to. I think I started off trying to do a pattern and then I gave up. Now, sometimes you will just literally go cross-eyed trying to keep this stuff straight. Okay, grab it toward the middle. Walk your fingers toward each other, pinching those. And then you're going to take whatever type of a tie you want here. You can use a zip tie. You can use some floor wire or, like I did, just use this little pipe cleaner or Chanel stem. These little fuzzy wires, whatever you want to call those. And then in the process of twisting those, you can go ahead and pull them so that you get some even pieces on each side. Make sure that they're all flipped with, if they have a pattern, that the pattern is on the top because sometimes when you're twisting it aggressively, they will get out of order for you. Just go ahead and fix it the way you like it. And you can trim off anything that you wanna trim. You can make the top pieces shorter and the bottom pieces longer if you want. You can dovetail them, but I don't think that dovetailing is going to be the thing to do with this type of bow because the ribbon is so thin, so small. So I want to put this in the center. I'm going to make a little platform for my bow. Just going to cut it off and then squish that down. I think I was trying to cut through the ribbon. Okay, then right in the center, I'm going to put some hot glue and then press this down. Hold it down for a minute. If your bow has any bulk, it's gonna to try to pick up, then it's gonna fall off. So just go ahead and trim it. Easy enough. With farmhouse, you don't have to be precise. You want, you want it to look, you want it to look homemade, you know, handmade. So now the easy part, the tag. The other half of that wire that we use, just gonna twist it, make a little oval, and we're going to use that as the hanger for our sign. Little more glue and a scrap piece of ribbon or paper, whatever you have on hand. Press that down. Protect your fingers, of course. Give it a moment to dry because that's good, a good bit of glue that I put on there. And then you can flip it over and look at the beauty you made. Isn't that nice? It's simple, it's really quick to make. I think it would be a nice gift for someone. And it's certainly a piece that you could use in your farmhouse decor all year long. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Be sure you follow me on my social media. You can find those links in the description box below. Bye.